The story begins with an ordinary student called Mirai Kekashi. We see a crowded classroom with everyone celebrating their graduation. Mirai just stares at his diploma with a blank expression. When the school day ends Mirai makes his way to a store. There he starts to buy something but he walks out empty-handed. We see the top of a giant building and Mirai now standing on the ledge. He decides that his life is not worth living anymore, and he just wanted to be happy once in his life. Mirai leaps off the building to his death but before he can hit the ground an angel catches him. The angel's name is Nas. She knows his entire family history, how his parents died in an accident and about his living conditions with his abusive aunt. Nas tells Mirai that her duty is to make him happy. Nas spreads her wings and gives Mirai a choice between the powers of arrows or wings. Mirai decides on having both powers. Their arrow power is a geometric shape that if it hits a target will make that person fall in love with the caster. Mirai and Nas test his new powers of flight, and while up in the clouds Mirai is so happy he eventually sheds tears of joy. He flies by a flag that has green clovers which remind him of a time when he gave his friend a green clover. Nas tells Mirai that she knows what his uncle and aunt did to his parents. Mirai remembers just how horrible his life was after his parents died. Nas advises to shoot Mirai's aunt with the arrow and find out the truth. Mirai goes on with it and his aunt falls in love with him and confesses that she and his uncle killed his parents. At that moment the uncle shows up and an argument breaks out. In a fit of rage Mirai says that they should have been the ones to die. His aunt listens to his command and ends her life. Mirai escapes the room more depressed than ever. He checks into a hotel and for three days just sits in his room. Nas finds it strange that he hasn't used his powers at all. Mirai tells Nas that he wants to experience true happiness without using his powers to manipulate the situation. Nas introduces Mirai to another power, the White Arrow which kills any target. However, Mirai is disgusted by this as he doesn't want to kill anyone. Nas then reveals that Mirai is part of a competition with 13 other people who all have their own angels. This competition exists to choose a candidate to be the new god. Elsewhere in a parking lot, another god candidate is murdered by another dressed in high-tech armor. The man in the armor uses a white arrow to kill him. In a place far away, God speaks to his angels. They have 999 days to find the ideal candidate to replace him in his duties. He tried helping humanity but it is time he steps down. Meanwhile, Mirai contemplates the existence of God back in his hotel room. Nas tries to motivate him by saying that becoming a God candidate, eventually God will bring him true and endless happiness. Mirai at first refuses to become a God candidate but later accepts that this gives him a chance to put his uncle in prison. Him and Nas watch on TV as another God candidate is seen with numerous women. Mirai finds this disgusting as they are probably under the influence of the Red Arrow. Nas explains the rules of the powers. The wings are used to dodge an arrow. The effects of a red arrow last for 33 days and a person can only be hit once. Elsewhere, the mysterious armored man kills Tanma, who is the man Mirai saw on TV. Mirai while on his way from school finds an article reporting on Tanma being murdered. Nas tries to cheer him up but they suddenly walk into a bank robbery in progress. The crime scene is intense, with the criminals having barricaded themselves inside with hostages. From the sky, the man in the mechanical armor shows up and Mirai realizes that he also is a god candidate. The people in the crowd notice that the armor resembles the character called Metropolimon. The man now being called Metropolimon uses his red arrows on the police and the criminals to make them listen. One of the criminals manages to dodge the arrow and shoots at Metropolimon. This angers him so he uses his white arrow to kill the criminal. Mirai gets scared and advises Nas that they both run away from the scene. Metropolimon is celebrated as a hero by the public. When they get back to the hotel, Mirai demands that Nas remove his powers and that he be left alone. Nas tells him that if she takes away his wings and arrow he will die. She also explains how the angels are ranked and can also move up and become ranked higher. Mirai is scared of Metropolimon but Nas convinces him to still go to his school ceremony tomorrow, as it could make him happy. While going to the school ceremony, Nas makes fun of Mirai about his school life and about his crush on Saki Hanakago. Mirai says that he will never use the red arrow on Saki. Just as they arrive at school Mirai is shocked to find an angel approaching him. While Mirai gets scared because he thinks this is Metropolimon's angel, it turns out to be the angel of his crush Saki. Suddenly Mirai is shot by a red arrow. He realizes that the person who hit him with the arrow is Saki, and as he previously already had feelings for her this gives him the opportunity to fully confess his feelings. Mirai is shocked to find out that Saki is also a god candidate and that her life hasn't been easy for a long time. The two talk about their angels. Saki's angel only has the red arrow as it's a lower ranked angel. Mirai decides that he will protect Saki as she has no way of defending herself against white arrows or any other attacks from rival god candidates. Some time passes and the red arrow effect from Saki's angel wears off but Mirai and her still work together. Everything is going well until one day Metropolimon reveals to the public that there are god candidates and he then invites them to participate in a special summit in a stadium. He wants all the candidates to meet and discuss who will become the next god.
but his real plan is much more sinister than that. He wants the power for himself and his only goal is to get all the god candidates in the same place. A lot of people attend the stadium event to see all the god candidates. Murai and Saki also attend but remain in the crowd. We are introduced to two god candidates Metro Blue and Metro Yellow, who were just ordinary guys before they met their angels. They arrive at the stadium to try to talk to Metropolimon. A young girl who was in the crowd also announces that she is a god candidate. It is then when Metropolimon starts his plan, killing the two god candidates Blue and Yellow and begins hurting and slowly killing the little girl. At first Mirai just sits there scared with the rest of the people. He doesn't want to get involved as Metropolimon seems so dangerous. Finally when Saki screams at him to help the little girl he charges into battle to save her. Nas stops Mirai from going into battle as he is too weak to fight Metropolimon. Instead Nas goes to Metropolimon himself and tries talking to him. He refuses to listen to her and shoots the little girl killing her and flies away. The crowd, including Mirai and Saki, is shocked and saddened. They return home and try to process what just happened. Mirai blames himself for not saving the little girl. After a little while, a strange man appears on the balcony door. He introduces himself as Nenato Mukato. He will soon die from cancer but he is also a god candidate. He admits that he has had his powers for a while and has used them to get rich so he can leave some money for his family after he dies. Nanato was able to find Mirai and Saki as he managed to hire several detectives with his powers and use them to find god candidates. Meanwhile, we see how Metropolimon is getting stronger with every god candidate he kills. His powers grow as well as his angels. Nanato tells Mirai and Saki that they need to team up and defeat Metropolimon before he becomes a god. Girl A is a serial killer who is a former middle school student. Metropolimon gives her wings and arrow powers so she can escape. Metropolimon is using her as bait for other god candidates. Meanwhile, Nanato brings massive amounts of gear for Murai and Saki so they can fight Metropolimon. Nanato himself uses a giant suit to fight in. He gives Murai a red high-tech suit and Saki a yellow one. Murai, Saki and Nanato discuss what is happening with Girl A, and Murai hate how Metropolimon uses people to his achieve his personal goals. Girl A, attacks and kills someone at Grand Tower in the city. Murai and his Nanato decide to stop her even if it's most likely a trap. The group arrives at the tower. Metropolimon set explosives all around the tower so when Murai and Nanato get close the explosives set off. The giant explosion swallows Nanato and kills Girl A. Nanato manages to survive because of his protective armor. Metropolimon threatens them that if they don't surrender he will set off more explosions all through the city. Murai starts to battle him while Nanato shoots Metropolimon with all the weapons he has. Metropolimon and Murai's fight is brutal and fast. Metropolimon teases Murai for being like a child and being a weak opponent. He also makes fun of him for refusing to ever take a life. Nanato being a skilled strategist decides to swap angels with Murai so that Metropolimon shoots him. This gives Murai a clean shot at Metropolimon with his red arrow. Metropolimon fires off his white arrow but Murai decides to stop the white arrow instead of attacking Metropolimon. Then the three of them fight in the air at full speed, with Metropolimon eventually defeating both Murai and Nanato with ease. Murai once again tries with his full force to attack Metropolimon but he flies off. Nanato and Murai later return from battle and they hide out at Saki's house. Both men manage to survive but they didn't accomplish anything as Metropolimon has only grown stronger and more bold. Then Murai has an emotional breakdown. He remembers his parents and he is heartbroken at the violence he now has to commit, and hates this battle royale that is happening. Then, Nas appears to give him comfort. She tells Murai that happiness is still something he can find. Murai calms down, and before him and Nanato can start planning again, Saki wants everyone to be quiet. She cannot handle Murai and his sadness. She feels hopeless and powerless as she couldn't participate in the battle. As the day goes by, Murai and Saki talk and try to repair their relationship. Saki carries massive guilt as she bullied Murai in the past. At one point she even asks Murai to kill her. She feels useless not only as a friend but also as a god candidate. We see their childhood and how they were great friends. Saki also reveals that she saw Murai when he was standing on that ledge and did nothing. Murai decides that the two of them should take a flight, and if she still wants to die he will let her go. Their angels Revel and Nas follow them. Saki asks for Murai to forgive her, but he tells her that he was never mad at her. This makes Saki regain her will to live. She decides that her angel Revel needs to rank up so that she can also have wings. Saki also starts planning to find a new base of operation for the team as her apartment is too small. Meanwhile, one of the students in school starts to connect Kanade Aryu, might be Metropolimon. The Kanade family is famous for dealing weapons, and Aryu also seems to have his head covered in bandages just like Metropolimon. The student also remembers that one time Aryu said he wants an ugly girl to disappear, 
the student becomes scared and decides to just pretend so that Ryu doesn't kill him. Elsewhere a new god candidate is becoming a threat. Hajem Sakatani was born under a bridge in a shed and for his entire life he has had an ugly face. Through his childhood he had no friends and even his mother took her own life because of his appearance. For that reason Hajem wanted to take his own life before he was also saved by an angel. With his new red arrow power, Hajem found a plastic surgeon and commanded her to make him beautiful. Now Hajem is a powerful and handsome god candidate but he still can't talk to girls. Every time he approaches a woman his face starts to make strange shapes. One day he sees Metropolaman who is the opposite of him. He decides to worship him and his goal is to become his servant. With his red arrow Hajem manages to find Ryu at his school. He decides to show his loyalty by building a trap in Ryu's school. In the dance studio with a mirror he creates a trap for any god candidate. With a one-way mirror Hajim can shoot the red arrow at any god candidate and they cannot escape it. Oryu accepts Hajim as his servant and together they start planning a trap for Murai and his friends. Oryu and Hajim set up a giant mirror ball trap in an amusement park. Hajim manages to torture one of Nanato's partners and finds his wife and daughter. The two of them are now hostages in the mirror ball. Nanato can't think straight and he puts on his armor and goes straight to the park. Murai also joins him. Both of them enter the trap and try to fly away with Nanato's family but cannot leave the mirror ball. While Hajam handles the group, Kanade rests to regain his strength. Saki can't join the fight just yet as she doesn't have her wings but her angel Revel starts absorbing wisdom so he can rank up. After a while, Revel cannot take any more power-ups and starts to become weak. Seeing Saki wanting to help her friends while she is powerless makes Revel emotional and he cries. This is the first time an angel has produced tears because of their love towards a human. Because of this act Revel is promoted and his angel form evolves. With this, Saki now finally gains her wings and she immediately goes to help Murai and Nanato. When she arrives she shoots Hajim with a red arrow. Hajim gets overwhelmed with emotions and this is his first time feeling love. This makes him confused about what he is doing. Hajim sees how much Nanato cares for his family and gets even more emotional. He decides to switch sides and betray Metropolaman so he stabs and tries to break the mirror trap and set the group free. Kanade shows up in his Metropolaman armor with several of his soldiers. Fayuko who is one of Kanade's comrades is a frightening scientist. She has developed a deadly virus that can kill anyone as soon as it touches them. She threatens Mirai and the group that she will spread her virus all around the city killing everyone. The only way to stop her from spreading the virus is that one of them needs to surrender and allow her to poison them. Kani decides that Mirai will be the one who will be killed by the virus. Saki and Nanato try to stop this plan from happening but it's no use. Mirai doesn't want any innocent lives lost and he accepts his fate. He slowly flies to Fayuko and is ready for her to stab him with the virus. Just as Fayuko is about to poison him Saki stands in between them willing to sacrifice her own life. Right before Saki can make her sacrifice, Hajim steps in and gets stabbed by the virus. With this act of bravery he saves both Mirai and Saki. His body starts to slowly fall apart because of the poison and in his final act he manages to drive his sword through Fayuko's chest killing her as well. Hajem dies and the angels come to take his body away as he died a hero. And this brings the anime to an end. Comment if you would like a part 2. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Until next time, take care.